I can help. Dear, I can help, and I love to help. I like to eat. I like meat. <laughs> I am helping on this project. My friend Chuck, the owner of Albert G's Barbecue, came by because he's looking to have some custom aprons made for the opening of their brand new location. Today we're here at Albert G's to do some R&D on our apron project. Let's get back into the kitchen and see what Chuck is up to. And samples. Chuck Gowie and I own Albert G's Barbecue. Talk about doing some specialized aprons instead of just your basic black. Albert G's is getting ready to open their third location, but we're here at the original spot where it all started. Hot links, chopped brisket, sliced brisket, crinkle cut fries, Carolina barbecue Potato sauce. Potato salad. What are we here to do again? <laughs> we're doing it. We're, oh, we're working. We're doing it. We're working. Love the their coleslaw. Yes, onions, pickles. We're looking to see what the people do on a day-to-day -day basis to get all this great barbecue food to the table. And I am sampling the food to make sure that I can get a good sense for what's going on so I can help. Mac and cheese. Spicy barbecue sauce. Coleslaw. All right, Chuck, so what we've got in mind, now that we've seen the kitchen and done some thorough research, is we're kind of thinking we're gonna do something, maybe a larger pocket for notepads, phones in the bottom. And then of course we've got your logo up here. And for detailing, I'm thinking bright red stitching around the pockets. Perfect. Oh! Oh, that's definitely. They are the best barbecue in Tulsa. There's a lot of barbecue joints in Tulsa. Well, uh, yeah, well I know, but they're the best. They're very good. I like, I like them. I love them. They're the best. Shay told me she wanted me to go and find some cool straps to put on these Albert G's aprons. I was trying to think of where I could find some. Army's got all the best gear. Why not start at the surplus store? And here I am. And there's a lot of straps. You know, maybe something like this. I mean, if she's gonna have these aprons, I could see something like this. This is just a little tension strap. You can start shortening or lengthening it. So maybe something like that. Army version of a fanny pack. Shay would like that. This webbing could be really useful. I think it's like nine cents a foot. One of the other things that I saw while I was looking around is this repair kit. Open it up, turns out it's a military textile repair kit. So this is for fixing like troop transport covers, almost like that Unimog that we did, but like the modern version of that. It could also be for fixing um, drash tents, which is a military type of tent that's super waterproof, really, really durable. Who knows if we're ever gonna need it, but if somebody comes by Shay's shop and wants her to fix some crazy military tent, which is totally something that will probably happen, she's got the gear, so I'm gonna pick this up too. We've met with Chuck, kind of gotten a feeling for what he's looking for. And of course, we have experience making aprons. So we're gonna start with some of the aspects that we like about our own aprons. I've got one here. We've got, of course, our logo. So we're gonna make sure we get his on there too. And then this front pocket that I love. For the straps, we're gonna use a webbing. And webbing comes in a couple different styles and shades. And I personally think that even though gray and black make great neutrals, I really like the flashiness of the red. So I'm leaning towards this contrast color. And then of course, our hardware. I'm thinking a gunmetal, something dark with a little bit of shine. We're installing sliders on the strap of the apron. This is one of my favorite parts. It's one of the most important parts to me because it reminds you that we are all different shapes and sizes and we all wanna be comfortable in the clothing that we wear. Giving this adjustable option makes it so that it fits everyone just right, and I love that. Now that we've got all of our pieces assembled, the next step is going to be adding on the straps. And I've got some of the webbing that we need, but now that I'm looking at it, I don't think we have enough. Oh, 
All right, what are we doing here? 100 yard yardstick. <laughs> that corner to that corner. Go Canes! So good. The best. The best barbecue in Tulsa. It was delicious. The best? Yes. In Tulsa. Correct. Oklahoma. Yes. I'm gonna do some research. I feel like I can help here. Okay. Okay, I'll be back. Well, research outside of here? I thought you were helping. Oh. Oh, <laughs> I'm helping. I'm gonna help. I like to help where I can, so I figured I'd go grab some barbecue and figure out where the best joint in Tulsa really is. I've got a job. And I would like to get uh, brisket, sliced brisket, ribs, and uh, does it come with two sides? Sliced brisket, okay. ribs, okay. two sides, potato salad, and beans. Okay. Hey, can I get it? One of the details I love most about the apron is the logo in front. But embroidery is a really specialized field within the sewing industry. So I'm going to call on some friends who are experts to really get this logo just right. We're here at A&B Embroidery to get the embroidery done for the aprons right on the front pocket. And I'm here with Ann, the owner, and she's gonna tell us a little bit about what we've got going on here. Well, at the moment, we're running pockets for Albert G's. Um, this particular machine is a 15 color, six head machine. So it will run 15 colors once we program it without any stops. This machine is incredible. Unlike my industrial sewing machines, these machines have what's called multiple heads. So a regular sewing machine has just got one head, which means it's got one apparatus with a needle attached, and you're sewing just on one piece at a time. This Big Mama has six. This is one of the biggest embroidery machines I've actually ever seen. This is unreal. My machines do not do this. Now that I've got them, let's get back to the shop and get these put on the aprons. I wonder how Gare's research is going. I'm getting hungry. Oh. All right, let me walk you through what I figured out so far. So I laid out my different uh, barbecue joints. Oak Heart, Billy Sims, Albert G's, that's banana pudding. Best Carolina barbecue sauce easily goes to Albert G's. Meat sweats, for me, they seem like they're coming from the Carolina barbecue sauce. You know what? Instead of dipping, I'll just pour. I was just going through and I was trying to rate the mouthfeel of those different sauces. So you can see there, just different notes, kind of it's color coded, I think it was color coded. Silky sauce, goes down smooth, um, strong on the tannins. This is potato salad. This is also potato salad. This is mac and cheese. That's neither here nor there. Just as the ketchup is primo, the Carolina tops it. And I don't know if the Carolina is a vinegar based. Does that count if it's mustard has vinegar? Is it mustard based or vinegar based? Chopped or sliced. Same kind of food, both totally different. You wouldn't even guess this thing's loaded with bacon and peppers. It's phenomenal. This entire time, and I'm really struggling, bologna is not barbecue. Why would you sell it at a barbecue joint? Also, my feet are up to help with the digestion because that brings the blood to my stomach. Hey, Garrett. Oh. <laughs> I can explain all of this. Huh. Hey, 
you feeling? Could you use some water? Yeah. I'm good, yeah. I'm glad I'm glad we did that. So today's the big day. We're ready to get these aprons over to Alver G's for the big grand opening. Chuck really began as a customer of ours. We hem his pants and uh, tailor some of his shirts. And from that client relationship, we moved into this bigger custom project. Chuck was such a great sport about letting us come in, steal some barbecue sauce, try out the food, see how their people worked. And I think that's the key to getting one of these projects right, is actually being able to get in the mind of the people who are gonna be using the product and making sure that you make something that really works for them. It's gotta be functional, form and function. You gotta have them both. This is a really cathartic, exciting project for us to come full circle now. So, for, you don't wanna open a restaurant without officially taste testing. Oh. So, for Garrison's many trips to all the Albert <laughs> Can I wear this, Chuck? Gosh, yeah, but you're going to have to work. Oh, my God. <laughs> I am ready. So, how'd it go? How'd what go? Well, the, the research, all of the barbecue, every, everything. Oh, yeah, no, that's right. Gotcha, the research. So I have a few notes here well, and I don't, whoops, a lot yeah, of research. grab this, yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna walk you through the statistical correlations you and know, I'm gonna Gare, need you to hold that. I've got we'll a great go. idea. It looks like so, we we'll... could use a little more research. Uh, there's a new barbecue place that just opened in Claremore. I will meet you out front in five minutes. I will have the dog in the back seat. We're gonna need aprons. I've got you covered. <laughs>